Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, our Kirsch and I are with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister, who is our expert in all things medical and health. Good to see you again, Dr. Liz. Likewise. Thanks, John. Hey, good morning. Uh, I have a question for you, Dr. Liz, which I hope uh, you can shed some light on. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, information coming out lately about because uh, we're doing some area in this uh, work in this area with suicides and things like that. And the suicide prevention hotline, which I think is 988. And it, it seems to me that uh, there's an emphasis on uh, depression uh, among human beings these days that like never before. And I was wondering, is that something that affects uh, men and women equally or uh, uh, is it is it a a new phenomenon that we're, we're seeing now, or are we just uh, talking about it more? It's definitely getting our attention, which is a good thing. Uh, it's considered and taught in school and a lot of other places that depression is up to twice as common in men as it is in men. I believe we've talked about this before, that that might be due to how questions are asked. All right, so I believe we've talked about that on another occasion. But definitely common in women and is it needs to be the awareness needs to be raised so that doctors ask questions and people realize the difference between occasional or situational things of sadness right i mean most have felt down on occasion the difference is when it persists <clears throat> and it lasts at least over a couple of weeks, usually up to several months before people are actually given the diagnosis. There's a lot of different times in life as well that women experience big life changes as well as changes in their body and their physiology that, for example, on the time of childbirth, we heard, of, heard the phrase postpartum mission. Now we're using the term perinatal, maybe either side uh, of childbirth at the time. Also, menopause is considered to potentially be a time of onset of depression. Although most women who are diagnosed with depression when they're in perimenopause and menopause have experienced and maybe even been diagnosed in the past. It's not usually an onset just because of menopause. Do you suppose, Dr. Liz, that um, depression in women is more, I, I won't say acute, more common um, because of the hormones that women are going through as opposed to male hormones? That's the theory. That's exactly the theory. Uh, there's another form of what we call mood disorders, which is referred to as PMDD. Uh, which could be premenstrual dysphoric disorder. So there's there's different variations on the theme, and it's considered that the changes in hormones contribute to that. It's really hard to say because women in our society experience uh, less status in many cases. They are usually at a socioeconomic disadvantage compared to men. They're usually the caregivers, the caregiving responsibilities, both for children and parents, often fall on women. Uh, there are a lot of situational reasons that women may experience depression more often than men. But it is very, very common. It's considered that up to one in five Americans will experience or be diagnosed with depression over the course of their lifetime. That's a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question for you then. Um, is there, um, uh, it's a two-part question. Number one, uh, how can people in general recognize that maybe they're uh, dealing with depression in themselves? Because it, it would seem to me that that might be hard to self-diagnose. And B, if there is such a way, or if you're noticing some kind of change, who should you go to? Excellent. Those are both great questions. First of all, it's good to be aware of factors that increase the risk for depression. So other illnesses can increase the risk. 
sleep disorders can increase the risk, substance abuse, eating disorders, anxiety, all of these can contribute to developing depression. The signs of it, again, we were saying it's normal to experience all the range of emotions, including sad and down emotions, but if they last, if they persist, and if they're interfering with activities of daily living. So if people have sleep disruption, they might not be able to sleep or they might be sleeping all the time and not feel refreshed. It might not be restorative sleep. Those are all possible indicators. And people should talk first to their primary doctor. There's a lot that can be done. Uh, therapy can help. There are a lot of medications that can be helpful. Exercise can be helpful. Uh, usually improving how we eat, cleaning up our diet, that is oftentimes going to be helpful. Those are a lot of uh, factors that people can look out for and talk to their doctor about. Yeah. It's a uh, it's an insidious, um, I guess it's not a disease, a condition. Uh, because my, my wife's uncle Jack uh, had what they called at the time clinical depression. Hmm. And I right. uh, was hospitalized for it for a while. Um, and it's really, really difficult. And, and it's difficult, I think, because you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, because it's maybe it's partly neurological, but it's partly physical. I mean, so it's it's mental and it's physical all at the same time. And nobody seems to really know, you know, which is which. And so you you basically attack what you can, which is the physical Eat better, right. sleep better, that kind of thing. That's right. That's and, right. Um, and yet, oftentimes, it's diagnosed as a mental disorder. Uh, and I think people are recommended to go see a psychologist or a psychiatrist, which couldn't hurt, but it's not necessarily, again, depending on the person, it may not be the right, right. solution. Right. That's absolutely right. Well, you know, the more that I do this, the more that I don't think that the mind and the body are separate. We know we can influence our mood by moving our bodies, going outside, breathing fresh air. Hopefully we have access to be able to do that. Not, not all people do. We have to keep that in mind as well. So all of these are factors that can help us address depression. And if it is more common in women, which is, it's def that's definitely the, but going understanding is that it is more common in women. We want to increase access to care and resources to help women with their standing in society and also the tasks that they perform, often at no charge, uh, such as family caregiving you bet. And, yeah. and make sure that they're not going through abuse at home. There's a lot that we can do uh, so that we can help our friends and family. You know, and, I think that uh, we ought to be giving our women emotional support as well as physical that's support. That's right. Uh, I, I, I also I wanted, wanted to add that over the, the last few years that uh, we've had the, the uh, uh, pleasure of speaking with you and, and discussing things that oftentimes were hidden, uh, if not recently, uh, certainly uh, a decade ago, we didn't talk about breast cancer, prostate cancer, uh, and, yes. and other things that we probably shouldn't be talking about, like erectile dysfunction with bent carrots on the screen and stuff like that, a Peyronie's disease. That's <laughs> that's that's the uh, that's the uh, issue of the day for selling uh, medications. But the really wonderful thing is that uh, depression has always always existed. It's probably no more common today than it was in the past. We just recognize it, and through these conversations. It's nice to understand that uh, we and people in our audience are not alone, that there are real things, that there are approaches to easing and correcting them. And uh, you've helped us uh, a great service in understanding some of the underlying issues of things that we never used to speak about and that there is hope. So uh, for Absolutely. Uh, depression, which, uh, as you say, affects uh, the understanding is affects women more than men because they have more events in their life that could cause this kind of thing. Uh, yes. and, other, and other factors. Internal and external. That's yeah. right. So we thank you for that. And uh, we urge anybody, if you're feeling off, 
go speak to a professional because there's a lot more help available today. Because even in the past, a lot of professionals weren't aware of it. So there's a lot more awareness. Take care of yourself and uh, find a professional and get rid of the things that are making your life less worth living and uh, be happy. There you go. And Dr. Litz, thank you so much. Pleasure. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.